new warning about ticks after doctors say a two-year-old girl from Indiana died from one that was likely carrying the Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Our senior medical contributor, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, is here. And good morning, good morning doctor. And what a tragic story to you lose your child to a tick bite. Right. And, and what what is important here? What can we learn from this? This is a sad story, but a lot of people haven't heard about Rocky Mountain spotted fever, but this is a bacterial infection carried by certain ticks, not the same ones that carry Lyme disease, generally gives symptoms of a rash, headache, high fever, abdominal pain. It can be treated with antibiotics if caught early. But the really important thing here when you talk about tick-borne illness is that it's really based on the geography. So if you look at these maps, for example, Rocky Mountain spotted fever tends to be concentrated in these areas, Lyme disease, New England, and the northern part of the country, and then Powassan, um, a, a more potentially fatal virus in these areas highlighted in blue. So where you are is important, and not every tick is the same. And I know everyone wants to know, what do you recommend to prevent it? We all want to prevent this. Yeah, so the, the bug experts have a great acronym. It's called AIR, and it stands for Avoid, Inspect, and Remove. And I'm gonna, I think we're going to go through yeah, that. I'm going to show you what I mean. And we're going to bust some myths, I think. All right, myth busters too. Yeah. Okay. So first one is avoid. avoid. Okay, okay, so there's a myth. Ticks fall from trees when you're walking through the woods. How Not many people believe that ticks <laughs> fall from trees when you're walking through the woods? All right, we have a few who believe that, yeah, so, so they, that's not they, true. Yeah, they actually don't fly. They crawl, or what's called quest. So in terms of avoiding, you want to spray your clothing with DEET or permethrin. You want to cover up, pull the socks up, and really try as much as possible to avoid the areas where you know there are a lot of ticks, so stay on the hiking trail. Well, I'm a golfer. I'm always in the woods, so I need some of that. <laughs> All right. Really? <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't say I was a good golfer. Uh -huh. I said I was a golfer. Right. Okay, so this is I. Uh, I for inspect. So okay. again, when you're out in the in these areas, you really have to, when you come back in, inspect your entire body. Hair, clothing, pets. And again, you know, that's really important when you pull your socks up. Mm -hmm. You want to look at the clothing when you take it off. You can't always feel tick bites like you can a bee sting or a mosquito bite. And they're bite. tiny too. They're very, really, very really small. Deer ticks are very small, yeah. And R. Okay, R, removal. Now we have to bust, this is serious myth buster. There's a wives tale that if you, you know, cover it with nail polish, peppermint oil, or worse, you bring a flame towards the tick, you can burn it off. Mm -hmm. Not only incorrect, but dangerous. So really, this is all you need, a tweezer. tweezer. You want to grab that tick as close to the surface of the skin as possible. S steady, gentle pressure out. You don't want to wiggle it around because then you can break the head off. Uh, and you want to just remove it. Ticks need generally hours and hours attached to the body to transmit disease. So the sooner you do your inspection, the sooner mm -hmm. you remove it, the better. All right, and hopefully you can just avoid it by treating yourself before you go Unless out. Unless you woods. hit your golf ball into the woods. Then you're <laughs> that is unavoidable, Doc. <laughs> but thank you so much, you Doc. Bet. We appreciate that. And everybody, make sure you heed this great advice.